वेलकम स्टूडेंट्स मैं सेल्फ वीरेश कुमार सो लास्ट क्लास वी हैव डिस्कस्ड रिगार्डिंग द इंट्रोडक्शन जनरल इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ ए स्टाइनगेज रोसेट्स ओके सो नाउ वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द द नेक्स्ट पार्ट दैट इज द टाइप्स ऑफ रोसेट्स एंड द वट आर द कैलकुलेशन पार्ट विच इज कंसिडर्ड फॉर दट स्टाइनगेज रोसेट्स so first we move on to the as i sent it one link to you all so that previous link includes different types of strain gauge rosettes means what are the different types of rosettes and why they are going to be so different and where are the applications okay so in this video i am going to discuss about the, the calculation part of this strain gauge rosettes so first we will again brief out uh, the types of rosettes uh, see here this is the first type of roset this is two element rosette okay it's a two element rectangular rosette so this two element rectangular rosettes mainly consisting of a two strain gauges one and a two so these strain gauges are mounted in a such way, such a way that it is making a 90 degree inclination with each other okay so this type of strain gauges are used mainly when you know the actual strain where it appears okay so the in that sort of situations you are going to use this type of strain gauges okay the second type uh, strain gauge it is a two element sorry it's a three element rectangular rosette where you can see um, gauge 1 gauge 2 and gauge 3 it is a strain gauge 1 strain gauge 2 and this is a strain gauge 3 so this is a three element rectangular rosette these type of strain gauge rosettes are used where you don't know the exact value of uh, strain where the strain is appearing means where the strain is going to you are going to get the strain so you don't know that is unknown value so you have to find those type of strain gauges so our final another more one type of strain gauge arrangement it is a delta roset you can see this arrangement okay it's a delta roset and here the inclinations which are going to be made uh, one is 0 degree another one is 120 degree with respect to the first one and third one third gauge is going to make the angle of 240 degree with the first gauge so like that the whatever the strain gauges are going to be uh, these are the three types mainly these uh, three types are going to be considered in a strain gauge arrangements we move on now we are going to move on to the calculation part okay so calculation part it's mainly consisting uh, from the two element rectangular roset so i have created a notes where the complete calculation process is going to be considered so in here we will start with the two element rectangular roset okay so as i said uh, two element rectangular roset is having the inclination this theta a which is equal to 0 that is the first gauge which is going to make the inclination zero angle and theta b it is making the angle of 90 degree so like that there are two gauges one gauge is 0 degree inclination another one is 90 degree inclination so what we have to do we know the main equations in, uh, as early uh, we had discussed in the introduction part we have the main uh, equation that is epsilon a which is equal to epsilon xx cos square theta a plus epsilon y by sin square theta a plus gamma xy sin theta a and cos into cos theta a. so similarly if you want to find the epsilon b epsilon xx cos square theta b epsilon y by sin square theta b plus gamma xy sin theta b and cos theta b this equation represents the epsilon a is a measured value means what are the value which are going to get in the strain gauge it is depending upon all these three parameters means the strain along the x axis the strain along the y axis and the shear strain along x and y axis okay which is having some inclinations with respect to that the whatever the strain value is going to be changes similarly epsilon b is also going to be determined so in here in the strain gauges we get the values of this epsilon a and epsilon b with respect to these values we are going to determine this epsilon xx epsilon yy and gamma xy means in a reverse manner we are going to determine in here so that is the purpose of this main equations so what we do we substitute the theta a value that is theta a is equal to 0 and theta b is equal to it's 90 degree not 0 it's 90 degree uh, uh, which is in the main equation you can see this equation okay 
So first equation, you can see here, we have substituted epsilon in the value of theta a, we have substituted 0. So what happens? Uh, epsilon xx cos square 0, similarly epsilon y sin square 0, gamma x y sin 0 and cos square cos 0. So what happens? So epsilon a, we uh, simplify this cos square 0. So cos square 0 is nothing but you are going to get 1. Finally, you are going to get 1 value. So that you are going to put in here. Similarly, sin 0, you are going to get 0. And uh, whatever the sin 0 and cos 0 in here also, you are going to get the 0 value. So only the left out part is epsilon a is equal to epsilon xx. So that type we have determined this epsilon a value. Similarly, we are going to substitute theta b value that is 90 degree in the same uh, the another equation what happens in the theta b 90 degree what happens the epsilon b is equal to epsilon x is cos square 90 so cos 90 is going to be equal to 0 okay so like that uh, this term is turned into a 0 uh, in here sin square 90 is going to be uh, finally you are going to get one value and similarly, if sin 90 and cos 90 is going to be 0 because cos 90 is there. So, we will get the 0 value. So, we will get epsilon b is equal to epsilon y value. So, finally, the equation will be like this. Since we have only two uh, strain values, epsilon b and epsilon b, you can directly put it as a principal strain. So, that is epsilon 1 is equal to epsilon a and epsilon 2 is equal to epsilon b because we know the directions. Okay. So, gamma max is equal to epsilon a minus epsilon b that you have to be uh, consider from the uh, what are the uh, mechanics of metal equations so next from those equations you have to determine the principal stresses so principal stresses also we know uh, in the earlier uh, introduction part we have derived that equation that is sigma 1 is equal to e into epsilon 1 plus gamma epsilon 2 by 1 minus nu square okay so epsilon 1 and epsilon 2 are the principal strains so we got the value of epsilon 1 that is epsilon a and epsilon 2 is equal to epsilon b so you can substitute in here and you will get the equation for this two element rectangular row set okay similarly sigma 2 we have substituted epsilon 2 in here so in the term in the place of epsilon 2 you are going to substitute epsilon b and in place of epsilon it is epsilon a so this equation you are going to get okay so finally the gamma sorry tau max it is equal to it e by 2 into 1 minus nu into e epsilon a minus epsilon b so these are all equations uh, first you have to remember the equation of uh, uh, that whatever the introduction part then you can substitute the values and you are going to get these all values okay so by that you are going to get the equation of two element rectangular row set now we move on to the three element rectangular row set so uh, three element rectangular row set is mainly consisting of three gauges a b and c means there is one unknown value that you have to determine okay that means you don't know the value of uh, whatever the epsilon xx epsilon y and gamma xy so you have to find out in here <coughs> so in here the gauge one is along the x-axis the gauge two that is b is making 45 degree inclination and gauge c is making 90 degree inclinations with the first gauge so like that this arrangement is going to be considered this is called three element rectangular row set so in here theta a is equal to 0 theta b is equal to 45 degree and theta c is equal to 90 degree so same way in the earlier what we have done in the two element rectangular row set we have substituted that equation in the main equation and you have found the epsilon a value and epsilon b value and epsilon c value in the okay in this three element rectangular row set you can see here so same similar operations we are going to carry in here that is epsilon a okay so you have to find out uh, epsilon a so what we do we substitute the theta a value so you can see the theta a value is you can it is given in here theta a is equal to 0 so we have substituted theta a is equal to 0 all the areas where theta is appears similarly when cos square 0 is equal to it is equal to 1 okay finally then sin 0 is equal to 0 so it will be 0 then sin 0 and cos 0 it's also going to be get 0 so we are going to get final equation that is epsilon a is equal to epsilon xx so next similarly for to find out the epsilon b value we have substituted uh, in the term of epsilon theta b 45 de 45 degree so you can again check here the theta b value is 45 degree 
So same, we are substituting here. So theta b is equal to 45 degree. So 45, wherever the theta b is appears, we are going to substitute 45 degree. Okay. So now see the calculation. So in here, uh, epsilon x is cos square 45. Uh, you can see uh, cos square 45. Uh, what is going to be there? So cos 45 is nothing but 1 by root 2 or uh, you can uh, just uh, see the calculation it will be 1 by root 2 and it if you calculate it you are going to get cos square 45 is equal to 1 by 2 similarly sin square 45 is equal to 1 by 2 cos 45 1 by root 2 sin 45 is equal to 1 by root 2 so you merge you are going to get so if you simplify this equation you are going to get epsilon b is equal to 1 by 2 epsilon xx plus epsilon yy plus gamma xy so this is the epsilon b equation so now finally we come to the epsilon c value so where you are going to substitute the 90 degree in place of theta c so similarly you can see here okay the 90 degree you can see theta c is equal to 90 degree you are going to substitute 90 degree wherever the theta c is there okay similar way so in here cos 90 is equal to 0 cos square 90 is equal to you are going to find it at 0 sin square 90 is equal to you are going to get 1 and here you are going to get 0 so epsilon c is equal to epsilon y y so these are the three values you have got so i have written separately these equations epsilon is equal to epsilon xx epsilon y is equal to epsilon y y so this is sorry this is epsilon c it's not epsilon this is epsilon a this is epsilon c um it's written epsilon a is equal to epsilon xx epsilon c is equal to epsilon y y and gamma x y what you have done you have written in terms of epsilon b but we want the value of gamma x y so we have interchanged this equation and we have written this equation and we have substituted you know this epsilon xx is equal to epsilon a epsilon y y is equal to epsilon c so we know these two values so what we do we have substituted by the value epsilon a in this epsilon xx term place and epsilon y y we also substituted epsilon c so we have interchanged there and the final equation we have got for the gamma x y it is 2 epsilon b minus epsilon a plus epsilon c so like that we have got three equa three values these are the very important terms because you have to substitute in the next equations so this is the next we have to determine the principal strength that is epsilon 1 and epsilon 2 these two equations you have to determine in here so you know this principal uh, strain equation in the uh, main uh, that whatever the introduction part that is half of epsilon xx plus epsilon y minus of half of epsilon xx minus epsilon y whole square plus gamma x y whole square uh, within a four bracket root okay so by that we have determined uh, we have to substitute the values in here so epsilon xx is not going to epsilon a which we have got in this equation in this derivation epsilon y is equal to epsilon c similarly epsilon a minus epsilon c square you have substituted in here the gamma x y you have no you know that value okay the gamma x y you have got the equation value in there gamma x is equal to 2 epsilon x to epsilon b minus epsilon a plus epsilon c so like that you have done this whatever the uh, substitution okay so this is the epsilon 1 similarly epsilon 2 has to substitute and you are going to get only changes is plus and minus sign okay this is the equation you are going to get next you have to put the gamma max so gamma max is the this term you have to substitute so gamma max this complete term you have to substitute and you are going to then get the gamma max equation that is epsilon a minus epsilon c whole square plus 2 epsilon b minus epsilon c epsilon a plus epsilon c whole square to the in the root okay square root so like that you have to solve this equation similarly principal directions so you have to find out the principal directions since you don't know the principal direction of the strain gauges you, have to, you know this equation okay that is tan 2 phi is equal to gamma x y by epsilon xx minus epsilon y y it is in the introductory 
part equation you have to substitute gamma x y that is f 2 epsilon b minus epsilon a minus epsilon c this is the gamma x y epsilon x is equal to epsilon a epsilon y is equal to epsilon c you have substituted the value and you have got the tan 2 phi principal direction okay next principal stresses so in the principal stresses uh, you know this general equation that is 